morning folks, I'm stood in front of the tanks with the CIP pump going, recirculating that nitrous in through this tank again. And um, yesterday when we were doing it, there was an issue with tank one on that end, probably not going to be called tank one, but that first tank that we did, um, the nitrous in was coming out of the side of the tank under the lid which meant that it was going to cause an issue during CIP, I'd lose a lot of the chemicals that'd be running down the outside of the tank, ultimately onto the floor, possibly damaging the paintwork. Um, the nitrous did, did manage to lift a bit of the paintwork that we put down uh, a couple of months ago. So I wanted to avoid that altogether. And I came up with a solution. Now it's not conventional by any stretch, but it worked a treat. So I'm going to take you off the tripod and we're going to go up to the top deck and have a look at exactly what I've done. Right, so just negotiate a few bits and bobs that we're processing at the minute, filing cabinet, bit of steel that Froggy brought me, thank you sir. Okay, so looking at this tank, you'll notice if we come down on it, that the lid is slightly convex, it domes up a little bit. So that means that any liquid that's hitting this top surface, when it runs off, it's going to want to run this way and down the edge. And I noticed with the second tank that we did, if you look at it, the lid is convex, meaning that any liquid on the top is going to run to the centre and drip off. The first tank, however, was concave. Uh, convex. This was concave. This was convex. Jesus Christ, man. So what I did was I took it off, took it down there, put it on the floor and I jumped up and down on it several times. Look, you can see my footprints and uh, it is now concave. And I did the same with this one, tank 3, which we're now processing. And tank 3 was leaking. You can see that the edge was wet around here and it was running round. Look, there's a puddle and it was dripping off. But now it's stopped. So I did exactly the same to this. Put it on the floor and I jumped on it. Put it back on, no leaky. So at least we've figured out a solution for the tank lids. All I have to do now is this one, that end one's fine. And then all five of these new tanks will be uh, suitable for CIP without having to worry about getting any of the chemicals on the floor. Say hello Jem. Hello Jem. So while that's CIPing, uh, we're going to get this last vacant out of the tank today. Tank 2 is containing some vacant gesture and uh, it looks to me like we're running low on ESB, our best bitter. So we need to get brewing some. Only two casks left in stock. Whereas we've got 12 vacant in there, we've got 10 vacant in there, and we've got two vacant keg in here, along with the proof of concept, some Hazar, and 11 stout. So, yeah. Next week, folks, I'm gonna be getting my brew on. Whether the steel arrives for the fencing or not, that's gonna have to be pushed back until I filled all three of these tanks. Right then, folks, Gemma's downstairs casking the vacant for us, and uh, I've got the tanks recirculating uh, to obviously clean up the carbonates, as we know, and uh, yeah, like I said, we're short on bitter, and uh, it's come to my attention that all the pale ale's gone as well. You know, the pale that was the jaded pioneer, if you like, but he's now Harrison's pale. Well, it's all, all gone. So I'm going to brew some more, um, but next week, whilst we're brewing, I thought I'd share another recipe with you. So if you're quick enough over the weekend, uh, it might be a bit difficult because this video isn't going to go out until Saturday morning, but if you shoot out now, or well, you might have time Monday, Tuesday, because I probably won't get to this brew until Wednesday, then I'll give you the recipe, and if you fancy it, you can brew exactly the same beer as me. And I don't even know where we're gonna go with this. I haven't got the recipe yet. All I know is it's gonna be a Centennial Red IPA. 
Sound interesting? We've had a lot of people in the pub asking for a red beer, so uh, I'm going to go for it. So let's get zoomed right in on the computer. I'll probably have to adjust to get you in a little bit better than that, but uh, let's get going. Right then, folkios. I've uh, got this set up for your benefit and totally not mine, so bear with me if I can't see the screen properly. I'm trying to make sure that you guys can. So, for the benefit of all you budding home brewers out there and experienced ones, we'll start with a new recipe. And uh, where do we do that? Let's have a look. Yeah, we're in Master Recipes and we want to add a new recipe. Not a new folder, a new recipe. There we go. And for the recipe, uh, what we'll do is we'll brew a standard 5 gallon or 19 litre batch for you and then we'll scale it up. I'll scale it up afterwards for uh, 500 litres so you will get to see exactly what uh, we're making. So down here in the style guide we're going to pop up and we're going to look for a red IPA now whether these BJCP style guidelines are the same as what you have on yours, I don't know. I've still got the 2015 on. I don't really use them that much these days. They are there for reference and if I need to look at a beer style in any more depth, I will go onto the internet independently of uh, Beersmith and pick out the info that I need. So. This beer is going to start with some base malt, so let's add some fermentables. We want some pale malt. And uh, I use extra pale malt, I wonder if that's on here. I think I might have neglected to put it on, yeah, so let's just put pale. So we've got some UK pale malt there, there we go, that'll do. How much do we want? I'm going to guess and say four kilograms. Let's try that. Uh, we'll add that fermentable and then we're gonna have we're gonna have some uh, cara or crystal malt. So <clears throat> I could do with some crystal 60 I think. Uh, so that's 240 EBC but I believe that's 60 lover bond uh, no, that's that one. There we go. Crystal 60. So that would be that bad boy. We're aiming for about 10%, so... No, I don't want 10%. Let's just try 100 grams. I'm literally winging it, folks. So that'll give us a little bit of colour. Then we want a bit of darker crystal. So this crystal 240 here, which would be... Uh, there's 240 EBC anyway. Let's just go with that. So a bit of crystal 240 again. We'll add uh, 0.1 kilo. Uh, I'm just coming out because I changed that to 100 kilograms. Look, that's an error. That's a rounding error. 0.1. Because I normally use kilograms, you see. So now that we're down in the homebrew scale, then of course we're into grams or tenths of kilograms and whatnot. So. We're not very red yet, are we? So let's get back into those fermentables and let's have a look for some black. Black malt, there we go, some black pattern. Let's try uh, 0 0.05. Let's try 50 grams of that. Ah, there we go. The colour is already beginning to shift. So what else could we add? which is going to uh, change the colour a little bit. And it has to be something that I've got in stock. I've got a stock list here. Um, I don't have any brown malt. Uh, I've got some Crystal 400. So let's try that then. There we go, some Crystal 400. Let's put 100 grams of that in. See what that does. Oh yeah, we're definitely changing colour now, definitely. And I don't want to make it too complex beer, um, but I suppose we can risk a little bit of roasted barley. Let's try 
I like the um, flavour you get from roasted barley. What have I done there? I've just put 500 grams in by mistake. Uh, let's just change that to 100 grams. Oh, we're, we're borderline brown now, and I don't really want a brown beer. So, ah, there we go. Tweak that down a little bit. And it's changed the colour. Because there's nothing in there. Let's try 0 0.04. 40 grams. That's not far away, is it? That's not far off. And I also want to add a little bit of sweetness to this beer. And that's going to come from some Vienna malt. So, let's go for Vienna malt. I suppose you could use Munich if you don't have it. Uh, but we'll put a kilogram of Vienna malt in there. And we're already starting to develop quite a bit of character in this beer. And I think that's probably as far as we'd want to go. Maybe rain back on that a little bit. So yeah, I've brought the... Let's bring the uh, Crystal 110 down to 50 grams. And the 240 down to 50 grams and we'll see what that does. I think we're getting closer to a red tinge now. Yeah, you know what? I've kind of changed my mind with the Vienna. I think I'm going to sub it out and I'm going to go for the Munich after all. I do much prefer the Munich malt. I think it gives a a more crisp finish to the beer. So I'm just going to play around with the percentages now to uh, try and get the exact combo that I want in terms of colour. So yeah, we're, we're, we're still really quite low on the percent of the crystal malts. So I think I might just change one or two of these roast barley. We've got 40 grams. Um, black patent, we've got 50 grams. Well, let's just bring that down to 40 grams as well, which is 0.76%, I think. And uh, let's see what that does to our grain percents again. There we go. Crystal malt, 100 grams, 40 grams. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that. I think I'm happy with that. So. It doesn't look red, red over there, but these pictures are very rarely the same as what you want to achieve anyway. Let's just have a play with the roast barley. Yeah, so I'm just going to change the settings so I can alter the units in uh, less of a large increment. Let's just change it to grams. And... Uh, see what that does for us. So let's get the roast barley. I can use these two little up and down arrows then to kind of just keep pressing the button seeing if the colour changes and try and get a nice deep red. There we go. Well, we're back up to 50 grams of black pattern and uh, 80 grams of roasted barley. Let's bring the uh, Crystal 400 down a touch. Oh yeah, that just changed colour to very close to what I want. Let's just round that off at 60 grams. There we go. Right, so we'll just round these up. 60 grams. We'll have that as 80 grams. 50 there, 50 there, 50 there, and this, there's obviously a thousand, and this has 4,000. Right, now we're going to play around with the ABV a little bit. I don't really want to alter these uh, three settings, so all I'm going to do is just decrease the 
hail malt until we get to where we are. In fact, I'll chuck a mash profile in first off. So these are my mash profiles where I just run them on the degrees and I've just got simple names for them so you can tell exactly what you got or what you're going for. I'm going to go for a medium body so we'll mash at 67 for this one and come back to the design. Um, let's add some yeast. Uh, we'll probably ferment with uh, some O5. There we are. It says package and got to change these dates. So today's date, uh, a packet, okay. And then that just helps you out with your attenuation a little bit before you change the amount of malt. So we're not looking for a massively high ABV beer here. So let me just bring this down to three, four, oh, oh. Ah, we're in the ballpark. 5.5. I probably should bring that down a bit more, but you know what? I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it there. 5.5%. I think we can uh, we can get away with that. Right, let's go forwards. Uh, yeah, we've looked at the mash. We are having 67 degree mash. And now we're going in for the good stuff. Oh yeah, it's all in the hops, baby. And we all we want to be using the Centennial hop. So let me have a look on my stock list to see what alpha acids I have on the Centennial. Uh, 2018 T90. It doesn't tell me on there, so I may have to just jump across. Uh, let's just save that and come out. Let's jump across into my stock control and have a look if I've got... Uh, Centennial in here with the um, Alpha on it. No, it doesn't look like I've put the Alpha in there. Right, I'm just going to nip downstairs and measure the Alpha. Right, that's that sorted. They are 10.7. We weren't far off. Uh, 2018 stock. So we're going to go in for the Whirlpool edition first. 30 minutes deep at 80 degrees or lower and we're going to go for 50 grams why not I hear you say why not and then uh, we want to add let's just duplicate that and then open it back up so now we're going to go for uh, boil of Five minutes, 50 grams. Oh, well, that's given us 24 uh, IBUs altogether. And, um, you know, I don't think we're gonna need much more in there. Let's just duplicate and open again. Uh, why don't we go for a 10 minute of 50 grams that's probably going to push us over the edge now I think we can handle that 47 IBUs and we've got an OG we've got a bitterness ratio of 887 0.887 I think we're pretty much in the ballpark there and I don't really want to do much more to that folks it's just going to be a centennial hot bomb everything's in the back end you see if I put any 60 minute boil additions in there, it'd be way too bitter, way too bitter. So I'm going to actually call this uh, Centennial Red Ale Rad, <laughs> Rad Red, oh, why don't we keep that, the Rad Red Ale, Centennial Rad Red Ale, there we go, Harrison's Brewery. Centennial Rad Red Ale. Well, let's uh, get those brew steps printed off. One more thing, I'm just doing this addendum, but I'm gonna insert it. We forgot the bloody dry up, didn't we? So we'll just duplicate the Whirlpool edition and we'll change it to a dry up edition. And we're gonna dry up with 100 grams of pellet for five days. Okay, there we go. Let's carry on with the video. 
and then I just have to punch them all into my Beersmith program, uh, not Beersmith, my uh, Brewery program, BMS, Brewery Management System, and uh, that then will, oh hold on, right now that's printing I just have to uh, put that into my Brewery Management System and once that's in here we will be ready to go ahead and print off the production sheet for the brewery. So there we go folks, oh you can tell that uh, I had to change the colour a little bit there to uh, get the screen in shot. Right, let's have a look outside how things are going because now we've got that recipe, I'm going to end the vlog right there and uh, you guys can pick it up with me on Monday. So if you want to brew along next week or even just brew the beer, I will be doing this particular batch either Wednesday or Thursday of next week and then obviously the following day the video will be released so uh, you'll be able to see exactly how it goes then and uh, if you want to brew it too then you want to make sure you've got the grains in for either Thursday or Friday or brew it next weekend whatever takes your fancy so that's it folks I'm gonna sign off I'm gonna let you uh, Go and watch some other amazing videos on YouTube, like a bit of new to homebrew Tom. Congrats on the 10K, my friend, and I'll see you all tomorrow.